at the Top 40 Under 40 Awards. A young Ghanaian who's actually based, he's an, he's an international, you can't say he's Ghanaian, he's international. He's got bases in Dubai, London, Cyprus. I'm telling you, man, we are conquering the world. And he won the, uh, he got the top honors, top winner of the 2024 Africa 40 Under 40 in the Home and Decor category. Basil David Anthony joins us live in the studios here this morning. Basil, welcome to Hot 96. Thank you, Jeff. Thank and, you for having me. And it's welcome back to Nairobi. Wait, wait, just take us back to where you got the, the idea to start whatever it is you're doing now. Uh, I've always been an entrepreneur from right from high school. I've played with everything, jack of all trades, you know, IT, uh, ticketing, events, parties, everything. But then um, at a point I chanced on flooring and then um, I took it more seriously. And then now Florin has gotten me where we are today. What kind of hustles did you have before? Oh, you mentioned oh, yeah, the parties yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. Which is the one that made you realize, I think, I think I'm think i on to something? Uh, ticketing. Ticketing. Because I came up with the first um, event ticketing platform online called TicketGhana.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was really passionate about that because um, I love technology. And even though I'm in Florin today, everything I do is technology-based. So technology drives everything, everything I do. And I also inspire you to always um, employ technology in what they do because technology makes you more efficient and you can multitask and work faster and do so many things than other people. So you, did you sell Ticket Ghana? No, I didn't. Uh, Ticket Ghana is still running. Unfortunately, the event industry was not as buoyant as, be, uh, as we um, projected. But Ticket Ghana now only does um, the event wristbands. So every every event you go to in Ghana and you get strapped with a wristband at the door is definitely from Ticket Ghana. Uh -huh. Yeah. Did even you? neighboring countries like Liberia, Sierra mm -hmm. Leone come to us to purchase tickets for their big concerts. Oh. Yeah. Are you still involved with that or you just uh, walked away? I, I am I am involved. I oversee things. But mm. like I said, technology can help you work from anywhere in the world. Mm. And once you have a good structure, you don't need to be physically there. You know, now we technology is there. So we, we can always have a bird's eye view wherever we are. You know, now that you mentioned technology, what's, what, are, what are your thoughts on uh, AI? You know? uh, AI is great. It's very informative. It's going gonna, it's gonna to shape the future better. It's like it's healthcare. You know, it depends on which industry you are, you are looking at AI for. For healthcare, is a fantastic. For uh, then, but you know, in everything, there are the bad, there are bad nuts who are trying to use AI for bad things. I paid her off, and I'm ready for president. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous in some ways, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, everything. The alcohol is dangerous, but it depends on the level at which. So we just, we just need to have policies. Mm. You know, all these things keep springing up, and it's up to our governments to shield it, create policies, create uh, committees that will oversee this and make sure it doesn't do the, the, the negative stuff we hope it would not do. That's mm. it. So tell me, how did um, this competition go? I mean, yeah. how did you get involved and how, how does it work? Well, um, I mean, you see, they, they, they advertise online for submissions. Um, you submit your profile, your works, everything. Um, they nominate you with a group of others. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's left up to the judges and the, their panel. And then I, the voting is actually not that much. It's probably 30% of the... So it's, it's a substance. A substance based your work needs to speak for itself yeah and you you've also have to apart from work you can't you can't just be doing business and not having a social uh, economic impact mm. so my company like this we've trained female vinyl tilers in ghana over 50 female vinyl tilers to install carpet tiles pvc spc tiles in ghana carpet grass as well we've also trained a lot of um, male artisans and empowered them we also do philanthropic works you know, so it's not just uh, business, it's not just for yourself. Once it touches the lid, it has to spill over too. Mm -hmm. So everything you make is uh, manufactured, where, where do you manufacture uh, your... Different places. Our towels are manufactured in Belgium. Our uh, adhesives and waterproofing are manufactured in UAE, uh, which is uh, Dubai, obviously, but UAE yeah. is the country, uh, mm -hmm. in Ras al Khaimah. So, there's a, well, besides, so it's the tickets only that you do in... Uh, the in ticket here is just Ghana. Because those were the early things I started with. IT, okay. ticketing. And the flooring was like more or less the last business I got into seven years ago. But that's what took me out of Ghana. Let me ask you. So why can't you do some of these things like the plastics in Ghana? Is it like tax I, regime? I, I, I love or? your question about manufacturing. You know, everybody thinks we need to, we, we, we need to manufacture. Manufacturing is going to solve our our economic issues it's not it's not per se so because look at the arab world mm. they don't manufacture things that as much as they do but their economies are stable and um, when you talk about manufacturing too it's about access to raw materials 
The fact that you are thinking of manufacturing, do you have access to the raw materials locally? That's one. Because where you might get your raw materials from, the next thing is that they might strong arm you and make pricing so difficult that your manufacturing in-house can even end up costing more. That's one. Mm-hmm. Um, two, do you have the, the manufacturing is about um, the, the, how many, what quantity you manufacturing in time space. Manufacturing goes with quantity versus time. Mm-hmm. I've worked in the plastic industry when I, when I was really young. So now if you don't have the demand in a certain quantity, like it has to be really enormous, your production cost will go high. Mm-hmm. So you can still manufacture, but you can manufacture and your, your production cost will be so high that your selling price will be higher than it being imported. Because these countries you're importing for, they're manufacturing for millions of people. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, and anybody who understands the calculation of production knows that the more you manufacture, the less the cost of production is. So it doesn't necessarily mean you should jump onto manufacturing. You need to analyze this well before you get into it. You need to make sure you have the market and you have the raw material access at the right price. And you know, you also mentioned that these uh, tiles are made from plastic. Yeah. And in Africa, we've got a lot of plastics that are going to waste. So what, what kind of plastic do you use? You look uh, we use both virgin and recycled plastic, uh, which is good because we are, we are not using 100% virgin. And also our products are recyclable, but not just recyclable, they are reusable. So it's not something you're going to get rid of instantly. Uh, if, you're, if you install PVC tiles in your room, you use adhesive, you can peel it off. You lose about 30% of it, 70% of it is transferable. If you use our click lock ones, they don't even use adhesive. They are like a puzzle. Mm. You take off the locking system, you transfer it. So the reusability <coughs> and the recyclability of it is actually even solves that problem. The green, the whole green initiative of the world. And where is it most popular? The sales. Where is it most popular? It's popular everywhere now. It 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 was it was it was tough growing it in Ghana because it was a very new product, but it took pains to train people to educate uh, to educate on how to uh, uh, apply and install it. In in the Middle East, the market is not predominantly within is a hub so example we are in kenya now from today to um saturday we are exhibiting at the kenya build corner at the sari center we're hoping to network with interior decorators contractors architects anybody in the construction and building industry and when they network with us and they connect and they want to make a purchase they will then purchase from our dubai hub so our dubai hub is more or less warehousing and storage and where because like i said we produce some in belgium we produce some in dubai so all our products come and then they this they, they move from there mm. yeah in this day and age it looks like everyone is going shopping in china mm. have you thought of that I've been to China a couple of times, but China is very tricky. You know, you need to be very careful. There's all types of qualities there. And if you're not sure of it, I mean, for me, I believe when you're not sure of something, don't touch it. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, we produce in in Europe. Initially, our production cost was a bit high, but just as per our production conversation, because now our volumes are higher, we are able to keep our cost lower. So it's all about volume also. Mm. Yeah. Which other parts of Africa are you in? I mean, PVC. Well, for... um, we started from Ghana. It's Kenya. Is, Kenya is the first place that we're actually exhibiting outside. We've never even done an exhibition in Ghana before. What, what took you so long? Uh, perfecting the product, I would say, because um, it's been a journey. Um, just getting the product at the right thickness, uh, at the right adhesive was a big issue for some years, and that's it. So I, I wanted to be very confident when we took it outside our home and know that the, we, we could defend everything about it. I mean, we cannot be 100% ready, but I wanted it to be like rock solid. So now we're rock solid. Now our presence, the product is, is good, like extremely good. And we are ready that we, we are confident about it. You know, you just mentioned, you mentioned that it's been improving over time. Yeah. And a lot of people in the world, whenever they want to do something, they say, hey, let me wait for the right time. Let me make sure the product <laughs> is right. So maybe just talk to the youth who are yeah. thinking about trying something that sometimes you don't really you don't have to be perfect yeah of, obviously it's one of the things one of my quotes i, I say that um, one of the keys to success is to start before you're ready um you will never ever be 100 100 percent ready but sometimes you you have to run before you walk especially in business uh, you would make mistakes you hit roadblocks but they are they are lessons and they're lessons that would guide you on the next step of of your business journey so i mean don't don't give up be relentless be focused and just keep moving 
and be authentic and be true to yourself be true to the customers also i don't 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 try and sugarcoat and lie too much and you know just be real with customers customers like honesty and honesty is always the best policy you say don't lie too much yeah. so mm-hmm. what's the right amount of lies <laughs> uh, that's what I'm saying. asking like, for me and people, four billion people <laughs> some people will always sugarcoat stuff but it, and if you ask any of my staff I, I i get upset even if i hear them trying to over convince and then now you, you begin to say things that are a bit untrue just stick to the, the right things and customers know they can tell customers can tell true uh, right from wrong yeah and then uh, i mean follow up uh, like you know um don't just sell things to people don't just provide a service to people and then when they get back to you then you're nowhere to be found because they're not important again mm. that after sales service and that communication is, is really key how many staff do you employ uh 40. wow yeah which, direct yeah well which translates to quite a bit huh well yeah yeah but this is across uh, two, three places. In your journey, yeah. and you're still under 40. Are you 40 yet? Or no, still? I'm 38. <laughs> still have a couple more. Yeah. Um, did you ever want to give up at some point? I've, ne- I've never wanted to give up on business in general. Mm. But maybe, yes, yeah, some products. Some products that were just being, like, I felt like we're really having a toll. You know, yes. But then, um, I mean, I, I, I dust that thought of probably it just takes a few hours or maybe I sleep over it and I'm done and then um, there are times that as a human being you need to take a break I I did that last year I've been working like back to back for like uh, probably nine years straight and I I felt bent out last year there were I I went like three months if you ask my staff they were not even hearing from me I was just monitoring stuff digitally and then I just took some time for myself Mm -hmm. you know travel see things you're human you need you need to have a balance also so any anytime you feel like the toll is taken on you uh, just try and have a balance also and get back to it. You, know, you pick yourself back up and you're back. So when you are taking a break, what, what, what kind of things were you doing? Holidays, like swimming. I was in the Maldives. I go watch boxing. I, I've been to Saudi twice last year. Mm-hmm. I saw uh, Fury and Nganu's fight. Mm-hmm. I saw uh, Joshua and Wallen's fight. I, unfortunately, I missed this fight because I've, now I'm busy roaming around with business. There's Tyson in July. Yes, uh, the re, uh, no, he just fought, um, what's his name, Usyk. Uh, oh, Mike Tyson. Uh, oh, Mike Tyson, yeah. yeah, Mike Tyson with the, the YouTuber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Paul Jake uh, or something, Jake Paul. Uh, yeah, Jake, Jake Paul. Paul. I love Jake Paul. I love his energy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Mike Tyson is up for it, though. He looks fit. But I, I've been watching his training videos, and I can't tell whether it's just made up for us to believe he's in top form. <laughs> we need to see him in that shape for at least 10 rounds. Because boxing is, 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 a, is a lot of cardio work. 50, yeah. For fifty-seven year old, he's exactly. not too bad. Uh, three minutes, uh, a, a, a three-minute round with yeah. a one-minute rest, consistently. Mm. You need to be in top cardio shape. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Do you have like a support system? Who is the person who keeps you going when you feel uh, like you're hit a bump? I would like you. Um, I, 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 like more or less. I looked up to my. I look at my yesterday self. And um, try to do better than yesterday, but uh, when it when I when in terms of our people outside, I look more to athletes. Uh, mm-hmm. I love the, the 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 training shadow, the discipline most ad, most successful athletes have, and I, I I learn a lot from athletes. You'd be amazed that I do business, but my focal my focal point is, is on athletes. So who, who inspires you the most? Well, or like the top you, three? You get to football, Cristiano Ronaldo for sure. Yeah. And it's not really about his footballing. It's about his discipline and his approach to even life in general. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you go to basketball, uh, may he rest in peace. You're talking about someone like Kobe Bryant. Yes. You know, um, although Michael Jordan is um, presumably the greatest of all time, but someone like Kobe Bryant, his work ethic is what I focus on. So these two, I would say, are, more, are people that I... And then you look at actors. You're looking at people like Sylvester Stallone, who is in his 70s mm. and is still shooting series. He's still shooting uh, uh, sequels. I mean, you know, people like that, you need to emulate. You just don't look at the show side of their life, but the business side and the work ethic side is... We look at Will Smith. He's out with a new movie. He's in his 50s. How many bad boys have, movies have come out? <laughs> and they are still in yeah. tough form. He About was just 15. in Dubai marketing it i, I was at uh, the sarit mall yesterday there, mm. and they are there doing an activation like the team in kenya that's what i'm talking about people mm. that don't give up people that are striving no more they, they're not complacent regardless of all their successes they've just shelved it and they're just moving on to the next thing mm. and others would just think oh i'm i'm done 
you know? what is your ultimate goal well, the ultimate goal is to is to be is to touch a lot of people in a positive way before i leave this world and, and to leave a, a story behind that others can emulate especially my children and the rest of the world and you, to have companies across the African continent? You know, let me tell you something. A lot of people see me and they think the business is what drives me. Mm. But I believe if you, if you just have a good reason, a good mission, and you're on the right path, the business and the success comes like parallel to it. But you need to just be on the right quest. And these things just align. And you need to also test the energies of people you meet. Because people are going to come your way when you're in this kind of path of life. There's nothing wrong with listening. Nothing wrong with interacting, but you have to be focused. And what is chaff, you throw it away. What is positive, you align with it and you move with it. Because most of the things I've done are not things I thought over overnight by myself. They are things people inspired them into me. I said, well, it's a good idea. We can do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is not the first award you've won. No. Uh, Young Entrepreneur of the Year in Ghana 2023. uh, Ranked top young 50 CEOs in Ghana. Yeah. I believe there's more. I, I Ticket Ghana years ago won best showbiz friendly company mm-hmm. from city people in Nigeria. There's there's been a couple, yeah. And when you come to Nairobi, what is your op- ultimate objective? Nairobi is to observe, network, and definitely get a foothold in the business environment here. Uh, writing a book also, um, it's going to be called Dream Bigger, mm-hmm. which is to inspire teenagers especially because I believe we need to start um, indoctrinating entrepreneurship right from the, the young the young age, especially in the teenagers and high school. So I'm, I'm, I'm done. this is my contribution to it, writing a book on it, which is at least tailored to suit their reading ability and try and distribute it. And it's being uh, written by Kenyan writers. Mm-hmm. So we're connecting. What do you see like... Uh is one of the biggest things that can come out of Africa because at the moment we lag behind in a lot of things, whether it's technology, mm. innovation, entertainment. Uh, what's that one thing you've you've looked at and seen the great potential that Africa has? Africa has a lot of land, mm-hmm. a lot of untapped land, and it has a lot of um, youthful-minded people who have also left the country brain drained. If if someone is out there, you, uh, you you're an African, you've stepped out of the continent and you're making it come back think of coming back because um no matter where you are in the world i know in your heart that you you don't feel 100 percent at home yeah because africa is home when you touch down the plane lands in nairobi it lands in accra you, you i mean you feel that emotion in you mm. so get back to africa let's all help build africa because the africa we dream of and we're always complaining that we don't have is just because we're all not contributing to make it work we can't just rely on our leaders we need to do something for ourselves. So that's why I, in my small way, I'm doing a reality show. Came up with a reality show under my foundation mm-hmm. it's called Africa's Next Young Millionaire. So that um, my mission, because this, this is just me, this is what I can do. My mission is that at least let's transform Africa one entrepreneur at a time. So we've got a website, www.anym.global, and uh, young entrepreneurs 18 to 40 can get on there, register, and then. Um, we're going to have a reality show to have judges. They'll pitch their ideas to judges, and we'll see how we can invest to grow their businesses too, so that we can create more em- uh, employment. You said 18 to 40s or yeah. 18 to 40? So that I see, 40 like, years. oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> just above that. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be like the lion's den, sort of uh, like. Yes, the- but no, yes and no. Uh, <laughs> reason being, the lion's den. We watched it. You saw the winners, but do you know what happened after? Mm. Nobody knows. We plan on having a post production after that we need to see their journey we need to see how money was used we need to see their their mentorship their the judges have an impact in their life and it needs to be youthful it can't just be uh, because health and well it's part of wealth we why, why, we need to have like um training sessions like um let's say um swimming sessions, yoga sessions before you pitch your ideas, we need to realize that you also have a bit of physical, there's going to be physical activities linked to it. So it's going to be, there's going to be a bit of the apprentice. Like if you've seen The Apprentice Singapore, it has a bit of that in it. Your words of uh, your parting shot to like the youth, because mm. the youth is the future. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just want to let them know that um, in- integrity is a free marketing strategy. Um, dealing with customers, just be real and be straightforward. I want them also to know that... Um, they shouldn't be complacent. I like to say complacency is the obstacle between you and greatness. So whatever you've achieved, don't let it cloud your mind. 
don't get too luxurious and lavish too early keep reinvesting your money and then when you when you've attained a certain threshold before you you should start spending lavishly and unnecessarily mm.